Okay, so we have a couple of equations here that sometimes show up in this, you know, under exponential equations. But we've already seen these guys earlier this semester. So the key thing here is to recognize where your variable is. My variable is not in a power, which really makes it an exponential equation. It's the base. And when we saw this before, we saw that when we have a power, the way we undo the power is to raise both sides of the equation to the reciprocal power. So I'm going to raise both sides here to the 7 thirds power. And I've got to do it to the other side as well, like that. So when I do a power to a power, I multiply it. But since these guys are reciprocals, this is just going to give me r to the first. And over here, I've got to remember, how do I deal with um, rational powers? Well, what we saw before is when we have something that looks like this, x to the m over n means that that denominator becomes the index of my radical. And the numerator of the power is just the power of that expression. And typically, it's easier to go to the root first and then apply the power. It saves us a lot of heartache. So here, the denominator is 3, so that means I'm dealing with the cube root of 8. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to raise this to the seventh power. All right. Well, the cube root of 8 is one of those guys that we know. That's just going to be 2. So now I'm looking at 2 to the seventh. Now, when you're trying to calculate this, especially without a calculator, you don't need to go all the way back to 2 to the first. We know that 2 to the third is 8. But there's another guy that we know that's a little bit higher up. Right? So we should know, because we've seen it a lot, that 2 to the fifth power is 32. Now, if we know that, we can just build from there by multiplying times 2 and increasing that power. So 2 to the sixth is this times 2, so we get 64. And then 2 to the 7th means multiply 64 times a factor of 2, and we get 128. So we didn't have to start at the very beginning. I think that's kind of nice. You start with what you know, get a little bit closer. So r is equal to 128. There you go. Really not too bad. Now let's look at the next one. In this next one, we have x to the 4 thirds equals 1,296. Again, we recognize where our variable is. It's not in a power, it's the base. And so what we're trying to do is strip away that power, strip away that 4 thirds until only x remains. And just like the last example, we're going to raise both sides to the reciprocal power. So raise both sides to the 3 fourths power. Seems simple enough, right? On one side, we just get x. On the other side, though, this is where you have to be very careful. See, this is an even number, which, as we've seen a long, we saw a long time ago, this means that you have an even root, which means we have to use plus or minus because of its connection to the square root property. When you take an even root on both sides, plus or minus has to come into play. So even though I'm going to write the fourth root of 1,296, I'm also going to do plus or minus. And then I'm going to raise all of this to the third power. Now, if you've got your list of powers that we had on a previous document, this is a fairly simple problem. You just go down that list of powers of four until you come across uh, one that says 1,296. And you're going to find out that the fourth root of this is 6. And now we've got to cube that. Well, not too bad. If you cube a positive, you get a positive. If you cube a negative, you get a negative. And 6 to the third, you can look at your list of powers, and you're going to see that that is 216. So there are actually two solutions here, plus or minus. 216.